Should you have a restaurant blacklist as a DoorDash driver? Why do I keep repeating the name of the video? You may have heard other DoorDash YouTubers talk about their no-go list of restaurants, their personal list of restaurants that they will not accept orders from under any circumstance. You may have some restaurants in your area that you'd be better off not taking orders from, but for me, I don't think it's the wisest strategy to necessarily give up on any restaurant permanently. That's kind of what I want to talk about in this video. Now, I do have somewhat of a restaurant blacklist, so to speak, but I don't keep it rigid. In other words, these restaurants I'll try to stay away from generally, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'll never take orders from them ever again. Now, here in Midland, hardly anything is consistent. A lot of places have super high turnover rates, business rises and falls pretty sporadically, and so on. Now, the way I look at it, I would see three primary reasons to blacklist a restaurant. If you have any other reasons, let me know in the comments. But the three main ones would be long wait times, rude staff, and bad area of town slash difficult parking. Now, the latter two on that list aren't really a big problem for me in my area. So for me, the primary reason you would blacklist a restaurant would be because they are now, with a few exceptions I'll get into in a few minutes, most restaurants around here are neither always fast or always slow. Most everything here is just hit and miss. You just never know for sure whether you'll be waiting a long time or not. But in my experience, I've seen DoorDash and Uber Eats have gotten better with predicting the right time to send the order to the driver. Most of the time when I walk in a restaurant, I would say probably 80% of the time, the order is either ready or almost ready. But to give some specific examples of how restaurants are very sporadic and unpredictable here, first example, salt grass. In my last video, I told you a story of how I was waiting for an hour at Saltgrass one time. A lot of people probably would have never gone back to that Saltgrass after having that experience. But guess what? I've gone back several times and I've not had to wait that long ever since. Because they were just having a really bad Saturday night at the time, you know? Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, there's Jersey Mike's. Typically known for having the order ready right when I walk in, recently I've had a couple of decently long wait times at Jersey Mike's. But I've even seen restaurants change from a really slow restaurant to a fast restaurant. Crumble cookies in my area used to be extremely long wait times every single time, and I did blacklist them for quite a while. But the last several times I've been to Crumble, they've had the order ready within a minute or two. Complete 180 after the longest time. Denny's. I also told you last video about waiting an hour at Denny's, but again, I've given them second chances since that experience, and so far, I have not waited an hour. Now, Little Caesars is an interesting basket case. They often have the order ready on time, but they can have long wait times when least expected. At least with most other restaurants, you can kind of predict what days and what times of day they'll be more likely to have a wait time. But with Little Caesars, I've seen them backed up by half an hour on Tuesday nights. Now a couple of restaurants that you will see on almost everybody's blacklist, Wendy's. Whereas everybody talks crap on Wendy's, in my area, they usually have the order ready pretty quickly. In fact, that night that DoorDash was having this deal with Wendy's, and everybody was saying, stay away from Wendy's today, I had one Wendy's order, I showed it in my Hell Week video. It was eight items, but the order was ready when I walked in, and this is the brand new Wendy's in my town. The one that I've heard is doing horrible. Even they had the order ready for me. So I don't know what it is, but apparently Wendy's in Midland is not the Wendy's of the rest of America. Another one I've heard a lot of people complaining about is McDonald's. Again, this one's not too bad in my area. Sometimes there will be a bit of a wait time, but again, it's kind of average, kind of hit and miss. And what's cool about the McDonald's locations in my area, even after the lobby closes at 9, they'll let dashers pick up their orders at the door. So those are just some examples of how restaurants in my area are just too unpredictable to just put your foot down and say, I will never go there again. Now, I did mention I have my own little blacklist of restaurants that I usually try to stay away from. Let me list off those restaurants for you real quick. Number one, Burger King. Now, this is no longer on DoorDash in my area. It is still on Uber Eats, as far as I know. Now, there's one Burger King location I've never picked up from. There's another one I've picked up from, I think, once. Not too bad. But the one I normally get offers from is the one just south of the interstate, which I don't like to go to anyway because the traffic is just horrible there. But this Burger 
King will not start the order until you arrive. So you have that wait time plus the traffic to weave through, usually not worth it. Unless it's like late at night, then the traffic has died down. If it's a really well paying offer, then I'll take it. Second restaurant on my personal blacklist would be Popeyes. I'm definitely with everybody else on this one. Popeyes is trash. Never walked into a Popeyes and the order was ready. So again, unless the pay is worth the wait, ixnay on Popeyes pay. Third on my list, and as of right now, this one is an absolute no-no, Wiener Schnitzel. Again, not on DoorDash in my area, but it is on Uber, and I don't know what it is about crap fast food hot dogs, but every single order I've ever gotten from Wiener Schnitzel always took forever. Fourth on my blacklist is Jack in the Box. Don't even make me think about Jack in the Box right now. Go watch my old videos. Another I might add to my blacklist pretty soon would be Whataburger. I don't know how I went so long without noticing a pattern. Whataburger also does not start the order until you arrive and lately the wait times there have been getting under my skin yeah I know I talked in the last video about not worrying about wait times so much but let's be real if we can avoid them that's preferable if I had the choice I would definitely rather be on the road making money and also these massive drinks that almost everybody orders from Whataburger Oh, how much soda you need in one sitting, people? Some of the most cumbersome cups you've ever seen. But what a burger is kind of a dilemma because I do get a lot of orders from there. Which kind of brings me into my next point. One obvious problem with blacklisting restaurants is what if you're going for top dasher and or trying to maintain, raise your acceptance rate? You're probably going to be sent these orders from these restaurants that you don't want to go to. But if you want to keep a high acceptance rate, let's be real, you're going to have to take some orders that you don't really feel like taking. But since I do not care about acceptance rate on Uber Eats, I like to use the Para app, which you can link Uber, Lyft, Grubhub, etc. They recently added a feature where you can auto decline certain offers after setting your parameters for minimum dollar, minimum dollars per mile ratio, etc. And now they recently added a restaurant filter that will cause the Para app to auto decline orders from restaurants that you've entered in that you don't want to go to. So that's definitely a handy tool to have. In short, my advice for blacklisting restaurants is study the patterns of restaurants in your marketplace. Do make yourself a personal list of the worst restaurants in your area but leave it fluid. If you have a bad experience at a restaurant, maybe give that restaurant a break for a week or even a month, but come back to it and see if they've changed later on. And again, maybe be a little bit more lenient on restaurants that you know are gonna have wait times. And instead of seeing that as a reason to not select orders from that restaurant, take one of those orders every once in a while and use that as your pit stop. For example, Five Guys, we know they're not gonna have the order ready. In my area, they don't start the fries until the driver arrives. In some areas, they may not start the whole order until the driver arrives. But instead of seeing that as a reason to not go to Five Guys, I'll walk in, I'll let them know I'm here. Then I'll take a restroom break and even snack on some of those free peanuts while waiting for the order. Just take a little breather. But either way, you never know when the environment or the habits of a specific restaurant may change for the better. And if you've just vowed to never go to that place again over an experience you had a year ago, you could just be leaving money on the table. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments, do you have a strict blacklist of restaurants? And if so, which restaurants will you not go to? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Until next time. Can't think of a creative outro. Outro!